Hey everybody, welcome back. Movie review time, where we geek out about a movie we just saw. And we just saw Dark Phoenix. <laughs> so this is our no spoiler review. Uh, we're not really critics, we just like movies and we like to talk about them. Um, so, uh, you know, we just kind of wanted to come in here and talk a little bit without spoiling about what we thought about this thing. If you do want spoilers, we'll have a spoiler video out separately, probably like tomorrow or something. So if you're afraid of spoilers for this movie, I would recommend staying out of the comments because you know how the assholes be. But if you're brave, you can go on down there and say whatever you'd like other than try not to spoil for the cool kids. I know, I know what you're saying. That said though, um, as a little backstory, uh, I really loved the cut first few X-Men. I even kind of enjoyed Last Stand. It's not a great film, but at least it's kind of fun, which is something these movies, or this one particularly, is lacking. Um, and then when First Class came out, I loved it. I loved the new direction. Uh, Days of Future Past was really awesome, going both casts. Then Apocalypse happened. I don't think I've seen Last Stand. No, I showed it to you. I showed it to you before we watched Apocalypse. Did you? <laughs> that was the Cuban, mis Cuban Missile Crisis in the 60s. Uh, I showed it to her. That. Uh, yeah, anyway, so that tells you something. <laughs> yeah, this is not much of an improvement. <laughs> I think it's just gotten to a point where they're all just blending together in my brain. Well, and that's the thing. That's the problem with these, these this particular last little bit run of X-Men movie, and thank God mm -hmm. it's over and MCU's going to get a crack at it, is that it's all just, it's bland. It's bland color schemes. You know, I mean, like even we're talking about the train stuff which yeah. we'll get to is like it's just gray everything is just gray and boring and or blue yeah yeah it's like <laughs> it's like just kind of do a duotone dullness you know um but again i mean you did get some really good performances in this mm -hmm. one uh, uh sophie turner of course is fantastic and she does make it worth seeing mm -hmm. i think for a lot i mean I, would, I wouldn't necessarily suggest you go pay theater prices for her performance alone. You need to be looking for more and probably getting a little more out of the mm -hmm. movie, but I'm going to turn that AC off. The car's rumbling too much. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, yeah. What, what would you give your, and I'll say some more things. What, what are you thinking? Uh, it was okay. I mean, it, it wasn't terrible. It's not as bad as it's uh, being made out to be so far, I think. But, but you know, good. at the same time, like, much like uh, Secret Life of Pets 2, I'm not sure I'm going to really remember it that much. Yeah, I think if anything, <laughs> the stuff I remember from this will be more out of because it made me angry. Oh. <laughs> like, really? Really? We're doing I'm this? Not sure. I'm not sure if anything actually made me angry. I'm, we're doing I'm... this. We're doing this again. We're doing... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, by the end, I was rolling my eyes hard. Like, even the last shot of the movie, I was like, oh, God, really? <laughs> I was about to ask if it was what I thought it was. Yeah, but, but like, don't, because no spoilers, yeah. Um, <laughs> I will say, because I went in with like the lowest of expectations, I was honestly dreading this. You guys have seen my trailer reviews. He has been. And and I just felt like, look, it's the last one. It's a Marvel movie. We can see it in IMAX. Let's do it. And um, and at first... It's, it's not a Marvel movie. It's, well, I mean, you know what I mean. It, it's a Fox movie. It, it's Marvel characters. It's not an MCU movie. But um, Although I... Uh, I'll, spoilers. Okay, that's what I thought. But I will say, um, because those expectations were so low for me that when I actually, when the movie actually started, mm -hmm. I thought the opening scene was great. It's kind of a drama scene. Well, there's there's stuff in there, but I mean, that whole thing was pretty cool. And then we get kind of a big, you know, we get the title and we get the big opening mm -hmm. action thing. And all that stuff was really good. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm enjoying this. This is kind of fun. It feels like a comic book, you know? I'm like, this is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But there is a point that we'll, of course, talk about when we get to spoilers, where for me, the movie really just kind of hit a wall, and I'm just like, oh, God, okay, here we go. Oh, God, here we go. And then through the rest of the movie, it's just like lower and lower and lower for me. There's a few moments here or there, though, that are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just a few moments here or there does not save the whole movie for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, a positive I will give it is I did I was really digging the music and I was like is the music always sounded like this and I don't know if this was his first time doing it or not but it was Hans Zimmer I was like ah that makes sense and I told her like Inception she's like oh yep I hear it now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> during the credits ah! yeah <laughs> um, so that was kind of neat there's definitely some callbacks to the other films even a, a particular mm -hmm. callback I'm not talking about here to the Last Stand that I thought was kind of like, all right, all right. I kind of, I kind of like what you're doing here, but okay. Now, one thing I will say, to me and spoilers, yeah, we will. I have no idea. And we'll talk more about this part too. But I think um, if you've seen the trailers and like me, you made some predictions about, oh, well, this is clearly gonna happen like this and that and the other. Yeah, it's it's pretty obvious, <laughs> and that is. Yeah, I was just say the, the big fight scene thing. I, I 
completely. And I was like, okay, that that did not go the way I thought it was going the to go. The beginning one or the end one? The end. Okay. Yeah, again, I, I think obviously there's fights <laughs> through the movie, so I don't I think that's a spoiler. I thought I said at the end, but oh no, I, you if you did, you, uh, you missed it, um, which is highly possible. Um, but yeah, uh, and again, I do think the performances all around were pretty solid in this. I do think a couple of characterizations felt very off for me. I think there's some fan favorite stuff you might be expecting because there's mm -hmm. a certain thing that it's like, well, at least we'll probably get this, and you don't. So that's going to be disappointing for a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> there's some things that feel like some other not so good superhero movies too. <laughs> there's, there's things that I go like, is that spoiler or not? I, mm. I know, just err on the side of caution, Fine. unless you can figure out how to say it super vaguely. Uh, but I mean, you know, I think we're we're almost done with the no spoiler because okay. get because again, I, I'm trying to like find some things I can say positive to because I didn't totally hate it. Like, I don't give a crap about Rotten Tomatoes scores, except when it pisses me off. Like, Godzilla, I'm still pissed. Like, I, that's a perfect fucking Godzilla film. That, I, the, that feels like a Toho Godzilla film with a massive budget, and that's what I wanted, and I loved it. So to see, like, all the critics, and even a lot of, like, the YouTube critics, like a Jeremy Johns and a Chris Stuckman, like, shitting on it because of the human... So, you know, so that 48% audience, 90%, didn't care. But when something is so extreme, as I heard coming into this, that the critics' response was, like, 16% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm like, oh, that's really bad. I don't think it's that bad. This I could see being more mm -hmm. in like the 40%. <laughs> you know, maybe 50. If you're a super fan, you know, I get it, but it's just, it's lacking fun. That's what I said at the end, right? It's like mm. the MC, MCU movies, even when they get dark and gritty, they're still fun yeah. at the end of the day. And well, this thing, isn't I think, fun. Well, here's the thing I think what's happening is where I go, it's which it's it, and that as it for me that's like very middle of the road it's not great it's yeah. not terrible uh, as they say on mr sunday movies it's just a movie <laughs> yeah and, but i think it'll, for a lot of people if it's meh it's automatically terrible well meh is not good so I think people want to hear that something's good. If it's not good, they aren't going to waste their time. Right. And meh, middle of the road as it is, counts as not good. So it gets lumped into bad, even though there is a distinction yeah. <laughs> between bad and meh. They, they, you know, they, it's like, oh, it's not, you're not saying it's good. I'm not going to go shell out 20 bucks a ticket or whatever. Yeah, but that's, again, but if you're a critic, though, if you're saying meh, Oh, well, yeah, well, if we're talking about the Godzilla stuff, they weren't saying meh, no, they were no, saying... No, no, no I'm not, we're not talking about Godzilla, we're Why talking not? about X-Men, because this is a freaking X-Men review. There's even literally a moment, and I won't spoil it here at the end, when it looked similar to something, and Godzilla is like, I wish I was watching Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> we're not watching Godzilla. We're not talking about Godzilla. Right, right. I mean, I'm going to try and see Oh my god, I'm like that. trying to reverse my own superpower. What the hell? Yeah, I'm the derailer now. Ooh, which I won't say it here, but there was one great, unexpected at least for me, um, X-Men appearance character that I don't think we've ever seen. Maybe they cameoed in the last one, I don't know, but we got a full-on thing out of this person in this one. I'm like, oh! I don't but, think I know who you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, but then it's like, oh. Okay, didn't do anything with it. Great. Sweet. All right, moving on. <laughs> Let's get back to the boring characters that are sad and mopey. Yay. <laughs> uh, but sorry, I, I went on my Godzilla tangent. I'm sorry, what were you... <laughs> I have no idea now. We were talking about movies being good and meh. Well, and... the thing is, if the critic, you know, if the critic's <laughs> meh, then the score shouldn't be 16. It should be like, you said 40. Well, the way, well, the way, um... Rotten Tomatoes works, and I don't even know it 100%, but it's like an aggregate score of mm -hmm. if critics liked it or not. Okay. So it's like, you know, so it's so a, which it is another really, reason it's so a bullshit again, it system. So it automatically takes meh as bad and... Yeah, yeah. So... And again, that's why I do not put a lot of fate, money into it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned with this movie, though, I mean, unless you're just an absolute super fan, you're a total mark for superhero stuff, mm -hmm. um... I'm not even sure. Now I'm gonna buy it on Blu-ray because I mean I have every other one of them. The completest in me is like I gotta finish the set. Well, you and your dad buy every single freaking movie anyway. Not every movie. <laughs> like Just 95 percent of them. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. Who's going video shopping every single Tuesday? Well, yes, it's fun. It's a father-son bonding moment, and it sucks because you can't really get them. A lot of the movies we don't buy now are because they didn't actually get them in the store, and then we forget to go and order them. That's pretty much it. But my point being, I'm going to buy it. Well, the point I want to get to is I think at best for most people, most mm -hmm. average filmgoers, 
it's a wait for Netflix. It's like, wait for a Dude. subscription service you already have. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's really yeah. not worth... I mean, and it was cool in IMAX and all that, but it, but even that, I didn't feel like we got yeah. that much more out of the IMAX. Yeah, it's like, unless X-Men's really your jam, there are probably better options at the movie theater this weekend for you. Yeah, yeah. And, um... Oh man, that, that was. I said, give Godzilla a chance if you haven't. Yes, seen it, please, cause... please let them go make some more money so we get more than just Godzilla versus Kong next, because they're already that's coming out next year, so that's mm -hmm. happening no matter what. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the IMAX. Oh, and this is what I was going to bring up too. I was just wondering if you noticed this too, because we did see it in IMAX. We know it was calibrated because there's plenty of shots that were crisp and clear and just perfect. But I felt like there were a handful of shots, a few dozen shots in there actually, were like they needed a better focus puller. Because like some of the close-ups on, particularly on Scott Summers, a lot of the times, mm -hmm. is very soft focus. Are you sure that's not just his face? No, like I mean, it, because he has a very soft-looking face. But yeah, no, this was like as if they were softening him to make him look less grizzled or something. And then there was like sometimes when it was like, there's a scene. This is not a spoiler. There's a very specific thing of Gene like on a table, mm -hmm. and like they were doing the rack focus from the guy looking and focusing on her. But like it only seemed to be centered, focused in the center. But like the edges were blurry. Well, and I'm wondering if that was an anamorphic. About something similar like that in another movie that we saw in IMAX. That's possible. Yeah. So maybe I there's something about. There was like weird fuzzy I think you were places. saying that in Godzilla which I didn't notice but because I was geeking out so I maybe there's something about maybe there's something about anamorphic filming being projected onto IMAX that throws things off sometimes well, we saw Godzilla in 3D yeah no we saw it in IMAX they didn't book it in 3D oh, in IMAX right. for some stupid ass reason they only had one 3D screening each day every week that's already gone so I can't even fucking see that movie in 3D now mm. like ever because no one makes 3D Blu-rays anymore dicks Anywho. I'm going to go see Godzilla. <laughs> so, uh... Sorry. If you can't a, tell, I really good, love Godzilla. I think we're done with the non-spoiler. Yeah, yeah. So, there's basically what we... Uh, yeah. Go see so, Godzilla. So, you know, if you like us, give us a thumbs up and... Uh, let's do the whole thing. All right. So, again, stay out of the comments if you don't want spoilers. But otherwise, if you're brave, you can tell us if you're planning on going, if you're skipping it, if you predicted it. Whatever. You can tell us. You can check out the Stardust app if you want movie reviews faster than we get them to YouTube. Look up the Eric Butts or use the link in the description below. And um, you can click the thumbs up button. Give us the good old thumb of encouragement, as we do love to be encouraged. <laughs> and fun fact, fun story, just real quick before we get out of here. I did get a nice little bonus on the way out of the theater today. Um, for those of you who watch a lot of YouTube, you may know of the reviewer of The Cinema Snob, who I absolutely adore. And um, as a matter of fact, we were doing car reviews before I was watching him. And then people were like, hey, it's like The Cinema Snob. And then I was like, oh, I don't, I, we weren't trying to rip him off or anything. It's just convenient for us. Yeah. But anyways, what's up, Brad? <laughs> Big fan, bud. All right, so I, I don't know that he's watching this. I just, I, I, Anywho. Yeah. We're going to get out of here. We'll see you all later. I forgot it's your bedtime. Bye. Mm -hmm.